This is Illinois Duo. It's a wafer lock, but unlike most wafer locks, this one is not really uh, low security stuff. Uh, this lock uh, contains 14 wafers and they are actuated by actually three bitting surfaces one on the bottom of the key, one on top of the key and one on the side. So, let's see. So the first thing to take care of is the, let's say, side bitting, the side wafers. Okay, got a small false set, small click from number one, click from number two, Click from number four. Number three seems to be springy, so we'll check the rest and leave it for now. So let's try the top now. So the top seems to be binding, so wafer number one, number two, actually the wafers that are binding, uh, they have nice counter rotation. Number three, number four. See, I might have missed a wafer, I guess. One is springy, two is springy, three is springy, four is springy, hmm, five feels strange, but doesn't seem to want to counter rotate so leave it be now let's go for a bottom number one nice counter rotation number two nice click number three nice click and core movement Number four, nothing so far. Number five, and we are open. So, and now for the fun part. There aren't all that many gutting videos as far as this look is concerned, so I will try and enter the, we'll see if it's going to be Hall of Fame or Hall of Shame.
So here's the inner part of the lock and now the lock is held by this set screw. And now, interestingly enough, the core goes right out of the Bible. Here's the Bible with the rips that prevent lock from the rotation when it's locked and also uh, the key can be removed in either uh, locked and uh, unlocked position. Here's the wafer stack. As you can see everything is in there. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the wafers are uh, in pairs and each pair shares a spring. And I guess these springs are going to cause me quite some grief. Now when the key is inserted, the wafers are inside of the core and the core can rotate freely in the housing. So Uh, the core is not symmetrical. There are some cutouts on this side that are missing on the other side, which I think prevents the wafers from falling out when they are in this orientation, but I'm not going to uh, try that right now. And I'm going to try and remove the wafers without losing any spring. So here goes the first pair. Here's the spring. So I'm going to try and catch the spring before it falls away. So here's the spring and the wafers were in this orientation so let's keep them that way and put them here. Now the second pair. The springs are on alternating sides, so they don't interfere between the pairs. There's the second spring. Top wafer, bottom wafer. Third pair. Okay. Let's hope the spring is not going to jump on us. Uh, 
Third pair. Come on. What's going on? Interesting, this pair doesn't want to come out peacefully. So this is going to be the fourth pair. It's interesting also the spring seems to be alternating. I mean, uh different kinds of metal. So, pair number four. Oh, number five, I guess. Yeah, pair number five. I can't compete. Uh, come on. Okay, another one. Putting it back, to, back together is going to be a lot of fun, I guess. Mm -hmm. See, there's much more wafers than I expected. Yay. No spring was lost during this gutting, which is great. So, here's the core. As I said, it's not symmetrical. These are some deeper cuts than on this side. So I'm going to arrange these wafers a bit for a close up.
So that's the Illinois door in all its glory. As you can see, there are several types of wafers depending on which part of the bitting is uh, this wafer going to interact with. Uh, it also seems that some wafers are, uh, let's say, passive. I would say these are those uh, with the more round tops and uh, they are wider. These, I guess, go into that uh, those uh, deeper cuts on the let's say top side of the core. And uh, the rest seems to have some, uh, say, uh, spool-like shapes uh, where they interact with the Bible. So, yeah, that's the Illinois Duo. Thanks for watching, goodbye and wish me luck putting this back together. Goodbye.